So here's where it gets a bit more fun. Here's part three of the video. Um, something I try to do with whenever I construct solos is to, to kind of develop on this theory and this practice that we've been using here, but kind of take it to the next level a bit. So rather than just looking at the modes we can use, um, I kind of take it on to other scales. So if we take, for example, the best chords are the ones which appear in rock and metal because they're a five chord. It's two notes. It's dead easy for us to play. Perfect. We can work with that. It's dead easy because in that case, we've just got an E and a B. Now, obviously, E and B falls into the E minor scale. It also falls into the E major scale. The only kind of variations of E that it doesn't fall into is anything with an augmented 5 or with a flat 5. Um, everything else is pretty much fair game. Um, and even sometimes when we might have um, altered chords, it may be we're actually calling it like a flat 6 rather than a minor 6 or a major 6. Um, and it still gives us that 5 sound and it still then comes into play. So how you need to approach this is to look at the notes which make your chord. As I say, the easiest one to work with is the five chord for this reason. So here we've got E and B. Now the one which I used in the solo for Chris's birthday was using an A uh, harmonic minor run. But as you can kind of see, I'm now playing A, which is over the E. to work out here is or understand here is how this works so first of all we've got this E and the B we need to look at what scales we're looking to put over it in this case the A harmonic minor which is made up of A B which is our important note C D E our other important note F and G sharp and by playing those notes over the E rather than having E minor <laughs> major we actually get what's called a Phrygian dominant sound which gives us this which I think is just a really awesome sound what we've basically got there is a major as denoted by our third so we've now taken this E5 chord into sound like an E major chord in this coloration because we've got a flat two which gives it quite a lot of tension and then we've almost got like a minor section in the middle of a uh, four perfect five and the minor six rather than the major six which now gives us basically this sound see how those notes sit there as with anything when we're using these notes we need to think about what is consonant and what is dissonant so we need to look at things like the E and the B and focus on things like the A or uh, the G sharp is actually the better note to come in on there because the four will be dissonant or slightly dissonant whereas the G sharp is just major it's a major third So here's what it looks like, which you'll recognize from when we did the as I played it on Chris's solo video. The harmonic minor scale is used by Inve for the that type of run he was a big fan of it and then also you have my other favorite scale which is the harmonic minor scale so again just because I've sat down and worked this all out and planned it and mapped it before I can kind of give you the quick answer which is that again we can use an A Hungarian gypsy minor scale over the E five chord even So 
in this case, we're going to have A, B, C, as we did last time, from A minor, but we're going to have D sharp. will give us a slightly different sound. So this time we'll have... We'll be there. And that's where you can really start to bring in these exotic sounds. So that's just kind of a very quick run through using that the A harmonic minor, A Hungarian gypsy minor, uh, A Phrygian, A Aeolian and a Dorian, sorry, E Phrygian, E Dorian, and E Aeolian over the E kind of drone note or the E5 chord as it is in this case. There are loads more that you can use all in different positions and things like that, but these are a couple of kind of really cool, quick, one ones which I use a lot. Hope that helps.